<clears throat> Hi, my name's Tanya Rennie, and I um, flew here from Washington, D.C. this morning um, with some failed attempts to get to my plane on time, so it's been a long day for me. Um, I am a consultant. I do organizational turnarounds, restarts, and essentially um, I'm in the business of professionalizing small organizations, and that's my advocacy to you all is to try to get to a place where you can feel like you've professionalized your fundraising efforts. Um, and so what I did was I helped to create a toolkit that's somewhere here. Um, it's called the five essential steps of fundraising. It's outside. Um, and I think everybody should go through that. It's a very back to basics, really fundamental steps to really essential ways to create a more effective fundraising. But the most important piece, I think, is the way in which you have to map your community and really understand your community in order to be able to feed it, all different parts of your community, and also to be fed by it, right? So really understanding that, planning, scoping it out, et cetera. So I thought since I flew all the way here from Washington, you might get something out of this. So we're gonna go through this tool together. Um, so I want to first ask, does anybody know what your inner circle is? Does anybody know what your inner circle is? Your inner circle are your staff, whether they're paid or not paid, whoever you would consider your staff, your board, your board of advisors, the people that you hold most dear, the people that are the most committed to your organization and your mission. Okay, so those are your inner circle. Now, what I would like to do is ask people the following. So if you would rate yourself a positive on this question. We have a clear communication plan in place with regard to our inner circle. We have a really clear communication plan for our inner circle. Does anybody have that? Okay, one. Okay, so not, not a whole lot of you, okay? It can be written or if you, at this point, I think what's essential for, for so many organizations is to just be able to know where your holes are, right? So the way that you map your community is the way you can see if you can map the whole thing, you can see where your gaps are, right? And then you can start to understand how to close those gaps. Because what you want to do is be able to build a strategy, and you can't build a strategy if you're just haphazardly going after money, right? Because you're really, really sadly looking at the long term, right? You want, you want to take a long view of this whole situation. Because it's a lot of money you've got to raise, and there aren't a lot of you inside your organization, I'm guessing, right? And you need to be able to do it in a systematic way. Right, which is the professionalizing of your fundraising plan. So the first thing you need to do, besides go through the toolkit and go to the five steps, is to understand your community. So one is to understand your inner circle, to really understand who those people are. And that means looking at your board and saying, are they truly my inner circle? Are they truly supportive? Are they truly engaged? Right? And if they're not, then you need to start to take steps to change that. Right? That's the most important thing. So these are the people that you can call in the middle of the night. These are the people that can really, that you can count on and count on and count on. The next ring, so if you imagine that as your inner circle is your smallest ring closest to you, the next is your friends and family. That's easy, right? And not only your friends and family, but all your family's friends and family, right? So you have a little bit more of a, an extended ecosystem because you have friends and family of friends and families, right? And understanding those two, and for you all, that's a really huge resource because you can also then draw upon stories from all those kids or all those adults or all those families, right? And you need to understand that those are really important resources for you in your fundraising, right? Not to fatigue them, but to understand what they are. They're a resource, right? So then after your, after your friends and family, so you have your inner circle and you have your friends and family, and then you have your partners and cohorts, right? So you have these these other organizations you work with, right? People that you work with directly, people that you share content with, people that you create events with, right? And you need to understand who those people are or who those groups are, right? How you can rely on them, how you can share events, how you can co-fundraise, how you can do all those things. So this is all an effort to really understand the map of your community, right? And so if you go through the tool one by one, you'll start to see there's, there's 15 questions for each section. Right? And you rate yourself on a scale of one to four, or one to five, on all of these things. And you can start to see where your gaps are. So then after that is your supporters. Those are the vague people. right? Those are the people you have their email address. Maybe they've given you 20 bucks. Maybe they donated online. 
maybe they showed up to an event, but they're not necessarily people you could put your finger on, you could go to, you could shake their hand, you could really understand who they are and what motivates them, right? Those people are sort of a bigger mass outside the furthest ring of your community. So once you understand your community, right, and you've got a map of your community, then the effort becomes to understand why people are where they are, how often they give, what they give, why they give, right? I was talking to a, a, a consulting group recently who said that, and they do these big survey groups for big faith-based communities and different things, and they said 80% of the time the reason people, the organization thinks that people give for the wrong reason, right? The, the organization thinks they give for reason X, and in fact, 80% of the time they're wrong, they give for reason Y. So you need to understand why people give. You can make certain assumptions, but then you need to follow up and clarify, right? So then you also need to understand how to move somebody from their outer circle, the supporters, closer in. Somebody gives, you start to see patterns. Somebody gives $500 every year. Have they been asked to give $750? Have they asked, been asked to give $1,000? Have, have they been invited to an event? Have they been you know, engaged in a house party? What ha whatever. Right? So you need to understand your community and then you need to understand your strategy of moving these people closer in, into more intimate circles, into more important levels of giving, right? and engaging them. Right? Because they all feel underappreciated, all of them. Because you're doing your work and you've got your head down and you're pushing really hard on this thing and they're giving their money and they don't feel appreciated enough as, a, as appreciated as they are, right? So you need to understand what motivates them and how to motivate them to do more or how to motivate them to do it more often or to motivate them to do it more with bigger dollars, right? And that means giving them more of what motivates them. It's not, you know, a lot of people have a, have, it's hard to ask for money, it's hard to fundraise, right? But what you're giving them, you're giving them so much of what they want, that's what motivates them, right? It's an exchange. So you need to understand what motivates them. So the first part of that is to understand the community. And so some of just some of the questions that you can ask yourself, and this is in the this is in the tools, is to say, and sorry, I did I poo-pooed the whole idea of slides, and now of course I'm thinking I should have slides. <laughs> so the first one is we have a clear communication plan in place with regard to our inner circle. What that means is every time you do anything, does your inner circle know? Do they know why you did it? Do they understand that they're involved with it, that it's personal to them? Do they feel engaged? So our inner circle really performs when they're called upon to do so. This is where a lot of your advisory boards will start to fall apart or your boards will start to fall apart because they aren't engaging. Our inner circle takes it upon themselves to help engage and act. A lot of us have people on our boards or on our advisory boards or whatever that are symbolic and don't act and don't help and don't do much of anything. Sorry. <laughs> um, our inner circle is like a shadow staff of our own staff. You can, they move boxes, they do stuff. They really make things happen when they need to or when you need them to. Our inner circle is well informed, active and passionate. That's your whole inner circle. You can't have 10 people in your inner circle and only have three people that are passionate, you and two other people, right? You have to, you have to really bake that into your inner circle. So then the next level is inner circle action. Our inner circle is clear, committed, and engaged in our work. Our inner circle is really, really performs when they're called upon to do so. Um, let's see. So here are some more practical follow-up questions that you would then apply to your inner circle is our, after meetings and events, our inner circle gets specific communications to keep it updated every single time, systematically. You're in a world where it's super, you're super passionate and it, there's a tremendous amount of emotion. You need to be able to get this stuff to the point where any monkey could do it and you do it and it comes to Monday and you write your blog post and it comes Wednesday and you write your, you know, whatever. And you just do it like, you know, the weather doesn't matter. And that's where you need to get because that's what becomes a sustainable organization and a sustainable fundraising system for your organization. 
So then the next question would be, our inner circle is made aware of financial issues immediately after anything changes. I won't even ask. <laughs> our inner circle benefits from transparency and open communication. I've turned around some organizations that would fail miserably on this topic. There's just none of that. We thank our inner circle personally and frequently so they will always feel appreciated. We host events and gatherings exclusively for our inner circle. Friends and family, it's similar, similar questions, you know, but uh, slightly different. So our friends and family take an active role in the organization. Our friends and family volunteer, donate, engage their networks on behalf of the organization. We have conducted keyword analysis to determine if the targeted keywords are popular amongst our friends and families. These, these sorts of questions, right? So we want to be able to understand each point inside each circle of your community. And in so doing, then really understand where your gaps are, essentially. 